Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today, sitting down to talk about Cyberpunk 2077. It was just about almost two weeks ago, we sat down to talk about everything happening between Steam Deck verification, this new Overdrive mode, and some of the silence from CD Projekt Red surrounding Phantom Liberty, the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 expansion that was announced at the end of 2022 in September during a bit of the resurgence. And now folks are wondering, when are we getting news? We now have that information on top of a couple of other interesting updates which signify how cyberpunk has really made a turnaround and why cd project red is going to continue to invest in this franchise so ladies and gentlemen we have a lot of exciting stuff to talk about even if i saw the media you know taking a couple jabs at what was going on here but i've got some thoughts so let's dive in if you're new here you're into cd project red cyberpunk 2077 you're in the right place consider subscribing let's begin at the top with what i think is the biggest news thus far and that's the Announcement of an announcement, if you will. This is the information I'm referring to that I saw a lot of the media poking fun at saying, oh, CD Projekt Red announces an announcement. But personally, I find it to be a welcome update and I'm actually happy they're taking their time with things, which is something I mentioned in our last Cyberpunk upload. So let's get to reading a little bit and then I'll explain a little further. So over on the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account, they posted exciting news, Chooms. In June, we'll start to share more information about the Phantom Liberty expansion. Stay tuned. This news comes alongside the CD Projekt Red financial results report where they said during a presentation that they are at the final production phase of Phantom Liberty with 340 developers on the project. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they're certainly scaling up and they're entering that final phase, which is leading to what I said last time around I'm a little bit nervous about where I think we're going to see people are talking about the Spider-Man and Starfield face off. I think we're going to see Phantom Liberty and Starfield face off in September personally. I don't know how long-winded they want to make this marketing campaign, but what I love more than anything here is that we know starting in June we're going to get information, which I think sets it up for, at the latest, a fall holiday release. And to me, that says they're taking their time. And I know CD Projekt Red had a reputation for that in the past. We know how they got ahead of themselves, the board got ahead of themselves, and rushed the game out the door in 2020. I don't think we need to go over that tragedy once more. It's pretty common knowledge at this point. But what this is showing to me is they're learning from it. And they're also keeping us updated in a wise way. So while the media wants to kind of make fun of CD Projekt Red for announcing an announcement, I like that it indicates to me, you announced it in September, there's a lot of popping video games happening right now in 2023. It is a super competitive year, no matter where you're releasing pretty much, but CD Projekt Red is taking their time and saying, you know what, we will talk about it when we are ready. And it looks like they're gonna do it during maybe Summer Games Fest, which is happening in June. We already know E3 is canceled. So it wouldn't be too surprising to me if we finally get maybe a release date attached to that first bit of information followed up by a red stream of some kind sort of like what we get with every cyberpunk 2077 patch uh, this one i'm super excited for because we already have seen that cd project red is investing the most they ever have into this expansion compared to anything they've done in the past right they're putting the biggest actors like idris elbow and keanu reeves into it they've even said themselves that this is the most they've spent on an expansion which i think should indicate some sense of scale but this is super exciting so june is the month you should be looking for new cyberpunk information up until then i doubt we're going to get very little a lot of today's information is coming from the quarterly earnings report as i already showed you where they're scaling up the production and bringing more members onto that cyberpunk team but otherwise prepare for a drought but at least now we know when we're going to hear more and i would again put my finger on the summer games fest but continuing on we have more information that reaffirms why cd project red continues to invest in cyberpunk you see after the spectacular launch if you will there was a real downward trajectory for the company they had made a lot of money at the launch of the game but they were supposed to make far far more analysts were predicting some nutty numbers riding into the launch of the game now obviously following the bugs glitches delisting on playstation and so on it didn't necessarily go that way and in 2021 we started to see cyberpunk 2077 in the bargain bin for five bucks for ten bucks at respective storefronts they were just trying to get the game out 
to anybody. It really wasn't until, as most of us know, the next gen update dropped that Cyberpunk started to have its 180, then Edge Runners brought the attention to the series, and a lot of people gave it that second chance. Why is all that lore, if you will, important? Well, we learned here through this chart that actually the revenue for Cyberpunk 2077 is higher in 2022 than it is in 2021. Now, is it significantly higher? No, but it's still a noteworthy bump. And you can see this in other CD Projekt Red games like The Witcher 3 and their expansions where despite it coming out in 2015, in 2019, it got a bump that was higher than 2018 and 2020 was roughly the same. In fact, what's really cool about this is Cyberpunk 2077's renewed sales made 2022 CD Projekt Red's second best year ever. I find this to be incredible because it does show that single player games don't need to storm out the gate in the traditional way with sales up front and diminishing returns over time. What it shows is the impact of TV, movies, and anime. And CD Projekt Red certainly has the secret sauce right now with Netflix. They did so with The Witcher on Netflix. We saw the impact of that on The Witcher 3 where it had its highest player count multiple years after launch. And Cyberpunk 2077, its resurgence, while I thought the game was fantastic, is mostly thanks to people loving Edge Runner so much, talking about Edge Runner so much, that they went, I want more of this and went to the game and were surprised with all of the updates. It's a beautiful tragedy turned into something very nice, but also shows the long-term plan can pay off with single player games and that you can win back an audience. I think part of that does stem from the fact that a lot of people still believe in CD Projekt Red. They have made consistently incredible games and in fairness, in the spirit of forgiveness, Cyberpunk 2077 was their sole mistake, if you will. And even that I felt was pretty dang good, but I know some people felt pretty burned by it and understandably so. But it just shows that when you can stick with it, you can recover the project. It's much of what I've said with something like Fallout 76. I know we're not going to really sing the praises of 76, but I respect that Bethesda hung with a pretty tragic launch and actually made something somewhat respectable out of it. Same thing here with Cyberpunk 2077. Tragic launch, respectable end product. Now, we mentioned how Cyberpunk 2077's team is scaling up, and as part of these quarterly earnings, we've learned just how they are allocating all the resources for their teams. And you'll see a familiar chart that we covered in our last video now updated to see where things are going. So we learned two pretty important things from this chart. Number one, you're going to see that the light blue, the aqua blue color as it progresses has expanded more and more as they're piling more and more employees into the Phantom Liberty expansion. What you'll also notice is the Molasses Flood project has marginally increased in the last couple of months, but compared to June, it has had a pretty decent bump. Perhaps most noteworthy, though, is that the new Witcher game, Polaris, has seen a pretty noteworthy expansion as well. So while a lot of people are talking about Cyberpunk 2077 and its Phantom Liberty expansion, which we'll get back into in a moment, what I want to note here is that CD Projekt Red seems to be moving toward that goal that they were trying to accomplish when they announced they want to do parallel AAA game development. It was a dangerous promise to make, in my opinion, and we'll see long-term how it plays out. I still trust CD Projekt Red, but the reality is they had a pretty bad launch and they're coming out saying, now, after all of this, we're gonna develop not just one big game at a time, but two. Since then, we've seen them expand into North American territory. They've bought up studios. They have been pretty aggressive in their growth, quietly so, whereas the conversation with you know, acquisitions has really circled around Xbox and Activision, and understandably so, it's the biggest acquisition in video games history. CD Projekt Red has quietly been grabbing talent all over the globe and naturally expanding their footprint, where now they're setting up this new Boston based studio to work on an entirely new cyberpunk video game. So, when you look at all of that combined with Polaris expanding, it looks like they are achieving their goal of parallel AAA game development. What does this mean? Hopefully it means that neither fan base is starving. 
I always find myself making these Bethesda parallels with CD Projekt Red. This may be a sign of some kind, but one thing that I wish Bethesda Game Studios did as a team that of course works very hard and has a lot of attractive IP is try to strike a balance of instead of one project at a time, they did look more into that parallel AAA development. As a huge fan of both Fallout and Elder Scrolls and, and possibly even Starfield now, we're gonna have a pretty big problem if Starfield's a banger, right? Where we're gonna try to figure out, okay, why do I have to wait another decade to get a new Starfield game? It becomes tough. So I like that CD Projekt Red has noted that there has been a wait for The Witcher, right? The last true entry we got was in 2015, but I think that's a soft number because you got to think of the big expansions we got afterwards, the next-gen updates, the re-releases, the Netflix show. Like, the IP has been extremely active. But if we're talking mainline release, a new Witcher experience, it's been a while. But now they have the remake announced. They have Polaris. They have, of course, the Molasses Flood project. Then you have, of course, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, and you also have the sequel to Cyberpunk, I would imagine. So they're doing a good job, it seems, of keeping all the pistons firing. And I find that future exciting, if not a bit daunting, because it's a pretty big promise to make. It's a pretty big ask of yourself and your talent to see if you can get those two moving along. And what I'm guessing is gonna happen is as they're moving along, like we see here in this chart, the reason it all comes full circle is you'll note that the Phantom Liberty team has expanded as it got closer to launch, and they even mention as such, 300 plus employees on Phantom Liberty is quite significant. So what's gonna happen is, for example, some members of, I would imagine, Polaris are gonna fall off as they get closer to the launch of Phantom Liberty. They gotta test things, bug fix things, cause they're probably done making actual content for it. They're in the polishing phase. That would be my guess personally. And so they're gonna start to pull members off of that team just to round things out. And once that's launched, then you start allocating those members of the Cyberpunk team off of support for the expansion and onto Polaris gradually into 2024. So this is a much more telling chart than I think people initially received it as, but personally, I'm very excited for the future of CD Projekt Red. They got a lot going on. It's exciting to talk about them. I think they have the chance to surprise people while we're all talking about the Witcher remake and a next Witcher game. And of course, Phantom Liberty. I think something like a Molasses Flood project can come out of nowhere and really surprise us. So there is a, a lot to be excited about here, but back to square one, the main focal point of this video, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, getting a lot of focus. It's gearing up for more information in June. We'll probably get a nice gameplay dump, a red stream, and I would imagine a release date. My guess is September. I don't think they wanna keep it too long-winded, and I think the idea of saying, hey, this thing you're excited for is coming in three months when it's an expansion works a lot more more than your traditional, we'll say five to six month marketing cycle nowadays, where they launch sometime in November. What I will say is that November release date could be possible, December release date could be possible, if Cyberpunk does need a bit of a delay. And I think for a lot of folks, that would be super encouraging if they saw them delayed, it would truly mark a turning point for the company in a very strategic manner, where I would almost argue a delay, even if not necessary, my conspiracy theory side of my brain is saying that would really benefit them optically speaking. So I can't help but vocalize that, but I digress. Just a lot going on here with CD Projekt Red with Cyberpunk 2077. Wanted to give you all the full update. Really looking forward to seeing your thoughts down below. So please do fire away. What do you make of what's going on over at CD Projekt Red? I am looking forward to your thoughts. With that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you all in the next video. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the heck out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Bruce.